the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have prayed you sin in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my mysterious fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Hard of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, and whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. Be God. Responsorial Psalm. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. To you I lift up my eyes, 
who are enthroned in heaven, as the eyes of servants are on the hands of their masters. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. As the eyes of a maid are on the hands of her mistress, so are our eyes on the Lord, our God, till he hath pity on us. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Have pity on us, O Lord, have pity on us, for we are more than sated with contempt. Our souls are more than sated with the mockery of the arrogant, with the contempt of the proud. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses, in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? and are not his sisters here with us. And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. As we continue our reflections upon the Eucharist in this year dedicated to the Eucharist, I wanted to continue with an examination of the sixth chapter of St. John's Gospel. Today we will look at verses 60 through 71. And what I did for you, whenever you look at your one page summation of the homily and the bulletin, I took 
the American King James Version, that translation, and put it here for you to look at. And I also today brought King James Bible and the Douay Reims, which is the Catholic Bible. So I bought both of those Bibles here because I want you to see what we'll talk about and think about today. It's not something that Father Saucier is just saying to you because he's your priest. It's not something that's solely Catholic. It's found in both translations of the Bible. This is the words of Jesus himself. Okay? So what we'll look at is what Jesus says. And remember, what got us to this point, these verses, the disciples, the listeners in Capernaum that day are having a very heated discussion. Jesus has been very specific in his language. And when John recorded it later, much later in Greek, remember we said he was very specific as well to make sure he got exactly what Jesus said. And Jesus spoke of drinking his blood, which, remember, went against what they had been taught from the book of Leviticus and the book of Deuteronomy. And Jesus had also spoke of eating his flesh, which went against another passage found in the book of Leviticus. How they are at the point of an immense struggle, his disciples and listeners. And how at this point when the things have escalated, what does Jesus do? He says to them the double amen. In essence, he doubles down. Amen, amen, I say to you, which is translated verily, verily, or better, truly, truly, I say to you. Now, after this, we read, and if you turn to your, and you'll do this when you get home, if you want to double check me, if you would turn to the King James Bible, if some of those, and please, let me say this before we go any further. We are being respectful in all of this because there are some who, like myself, have family members who are not Catholic. So in this, we're not trying to put down or belittle any Christian who's not Catholic. We're just going to read the words of Jesus and take it as is, period. Okay? Now, John 6, in the King James Version, verse 66, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. The Douay Reims. There is a one verse difference. So it is verse 67 in John 6, verse 67. After this, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Both translations, the quote Catholic translation. And the quote Protestant translation say the same thing. The disciples of Jesus, many, and John was very clear, he used many, a Greek word that translates to many in English. Many of his disciples walk away. 
Think about that. How long does it take someone to accumulate disciples or followers? You see that on social media nowadays. People try to get as many followers as possible so that they can be an influencer. But back in the days of Jesus, he didn't have that social media. It would take masters days, months, years to accumulate disciples. And here are the disciples of Jesus. Many of them are walking away. These are potential church leaders, potential men who are going to be out proclaiming his message, his teachings. They are so disgusted with what he is saying. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me again. But they're so disgusted in what he's saying, they assume cannibalism. They're walking away. Now would be the time has some of our non-Catholic Christian brothers and sisters proposed. They say that it is only a symbol. Now would be the time for Jesus to correct that way of thinking, to tell them he is only meaning it symbolically. Now would be the perfect time as they're walking away. What happens? Let's turn back to the King James. It's verse 67 in John 6. Then Jesus said unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him in verse 68, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Let's look at the Catholic version. It would be 68 and 69 of John 6. Then Jesus said to the 12, will you also go away? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Pretty much a mirror translation. In both instances, both translations, Catholic and Protestant, Jesus does not correct their thought. In fact, in both translations, Jesus turns to the twelve, the, his innermost this group of disciples, and says, Do you want to leave also? If he meant it as a symbol, why did he not correct that thought? Instead, why did he tell them next to him, his 12, there's the door per se. If you don't agree with what I've said, go, you're free. I'm not stopping. And for 2000 years of Catholic church history, Jesus has not stopped anybody from walking away. And people have walked away. They walked away in mass. And we still see that even to this day. People who say, but I want to go somewhere where I can hear the gospel proclaimed. I want to go somewhere that's not filled with man-made rules. I want to go somewhere that is inspired by Jesus. I want to go somewhere where I encounter Jesus. And yet, here, in the Catholic Church, following the words of Jesus in sacred scripture, 
we do not stop anyone from walking away like our Lord and Savior did that day. You know, if you think about it, and I'll probably say this later on in another homily, I hear people say, the Bible, we just need the Bible. Because if we follow the Bible, then that'll be all. Well, if that was the case, my friends, why are there so many different interpretations of the Bible and so many different Christian denominations? If the Bible provided one basic statement that everyone could follow and everyone could agree with, then why would every mind not be one particular denomination? We haven't progressed much since those disciples that day. They walked away to form their own beliefs. People today walk away forming their own churches. They might not have a church on a street corner or in a shopping mall. It may be only in their room, in their house, but they have authorized themselves as the Pope, the priest, and the sole authority. This is what I say Jesus means and what he means is this. Whereas when you look at the words of Jesus, my flesh is real food, my blood is real drink. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, you have no life within you. Found perfectly in both Catholic and Protestant Bibles in John 6. People walk away as they did that day. And Jesus turning looks at the twelve. And in essence, he turns today and looks at us and says to all of us today, do you too want to go? There's the door. It's right behind all of us. If you want to leave, leave. No one will stop you. But if you stay, understand. And St. Jerome said this well. And I paraphrase St. Jerome. But he said, the truth that Jesus said that day was hard for the disciples to hear as it always has been and as it always will be. The truth of Jesus that we honor today, that we give our life to, that we profess with this Eucharist when he would say later, this is my body, this is my blood at the Last Supper, that truth that is still 2,000 years old here in the Catholic Church, it's hard. It's hard to accept. Many walk away. So be. But I ask you one thing, just to ponder for next week, because we're going to start the transition into the Acts of the Apostles, the teachings of Paul, and later into the history of the church, the early church. But think of this. Jesus, who said those words recorded by John, he's going to die in approximately, let's say, 33 AD. St. Paul and we're going to speak about him next week. We're going to look at Paul. Paul is the first Christian writer. He actually writes before the Gospels, his letters. Now, if Jesus meant it other than literally, eating his flesh and drinking his blood, if he meant it anything other than that, we will look to see if St. Paul, writing approximately 25 years after the death of Jesus, because Paul dies around 60. We'll look and see if Paul corrects that interpretation. If Paul corrects it, 
then I will tell you I stand corrected today. I am wrong. I am misleading. But if Paul doesn't, interesting. But I'll tell you something. John, the gospel we heard, John wrote at earliest probably 80 AD. That's, let's see, almost 50 years after that moment, John writes. In that generation, do you think that if Jesus had meant something other than literal, John would have corrected it when he wrote his gospel? If Jesus had meant something other than what he said, would not John have said so, writing so many years after the point? Would he have not been specific and said, Jesus meant it symbolically, he didn't mean it literally, that you have to eat his flesh and drink his blood? He would have changed that, but he didn't. So let's see if St. Paul did. And if Paul and John both didn't, then maybe why is it we walk away from Jesus? May Almighty God be with you. May he bless you. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. our bishop and all the clergy with the people entrusted to their charge let us pray to the Lord, Lord for those who hold public office and those who assist them in promoting the common good let us pray to the Lord, Lord for those who travel by sea land or air the captives and all held in prison let us pray to the Lord Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered in this sacred place by faith and devotion and by love and reverence for God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our community, both here present and those watching on video, who are suffering, whether from physical, emotional, or mental illnesses, that they may be comforted by the resurrected Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. For all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, joined through the intercession of St. Richard of Ireland, let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
And let us today remember Cleo and Patricia Betty, who celebrate their 65th wedding anniversary. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Offering our prayers to the Father, let us conclude by asking Mary, the Mother of God, to intercede for us as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, but through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the light of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things and you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory. As with one voice, we acclaim. <laughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit and be co heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him I wait him I him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass ascended. Go. Thank you.